Alleluia, Christ is risen. Welcome to Mondays in the Psalter. I'm Pastor Vandercook. I pray that uh, all of you had an excellent uh, Easter weekend, an excellent Holy Week as you celebrated and commemorated the uh, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ once again this year. Today we look at Psalm 119, verses uh, 33 through 40, under the Hebrew letter He, or He, uh, somebody out there will probably correct my pronunciation on the Hebrew letter, that's fine, uh, but that's where we find ourselves this morning. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise that you may be feared. Turn away the reproach that I dread, for your just decrees are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So this psalm in particular, uh, I'll be leaning pretty heavily today on uh, Luther's works, volume, uh, I think it's 11. Yep, it's 11. Uh, volume 11, page, page right around 444, 445. Uh, because Luther here has a really nice section in his lectures on the Psalms uh, that talks about how this psalm uh, historically has been used to um, address the seven gifts of the Spirit. Now, to understand what the seven gifts of the Spirit are, we need to actually go to Isaiah chapter 11. Uh, and it'll be a familiar passage when you hear it. Uh, Isaiah 11, verses 1 through about 3, uh, 3a or so, the first sentence of, of uh, verse 3. Uh, but uh, that reads as follows, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Uh, and it goes on from there. So you have these seven gifts given to us in Isaiah, uh, the gifts of the Spirit. And when you read those, of course, you should immediately think, hey, I know who that's talking about. That's talking about Jesus right there, right? Uh, because Jesus is that shoot from the stump of Jesse, the branch from his roots that bears fruit. That's who Jesus is. That's what Jesus does. When you read about those gifts of the Spirit, you say, hey, that's Jesus. He has those gifts, and he uses them all properly and perfectly. We have been baptized into Christ, and therefore we also have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we are given these gifts of the Spirit as well. So what we pray for in this psalm is that we may use these gifts properly, that we may both receive them, continue to receive them from the Holy Spirit, and also use them properly. So let's look at the verse, the verses of the psalm, kind of verse by verse, and see where these gifts, uh, these seven gifts appear. Now, first of all, we come to wisdom and understanding. Uh, and it's wisdom, uh, then understanding. Wisdom kind of like the idea of knowledge, uh, knowledge and understanding. Or, I'm sorry, wisdom and understanding. And where am I going with this? So you have, uh, whenever we teach the catechism, for example, what do you teach kids first? Well, we teach kids to, uh, and maybe you, uh, we teach you first to, um, to memorize the catechism, which seems like a very re uh, repetitive thing and almost kind of, a lot of people kind of scoff at it and say, why do you memorize all those words? Well, it gives us the vocabulary to be able to discuss the faith. If you don't have any of the words, then it's hard to really have any type of conversation about the Christian faith. So first, we teach kids what the words of the catechism are, and then we go back and we help them understand what those words are. Wisdom, understanding, okay? So that's what we see in verses 33 and 34. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding, that I may keep your law, and observe it with my whole heart. There's the wisdom, there's the understanding. 
What follows from there then is that in verse 35, lead me in the path of your commandments for I delight in it. Here we are praying that the Lord would give us counsel, the gift of counsel. Uh, this is necessary, Luther writes, to those who are progressing, who have already been called and placed into some station, for such are beset on all sides by snares, temptations, and dangers, and therefore they need to abound in counsels so that a person can properly apply what he has come to know through wisdom and understanding. So you have the wisdom and the understanding, and now the counsel is, okay, how do I use all of those things? All right? The next gift that we run into is in verse 36. This is the gift of godliness. Incline your heart, uh, incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. You know, turn me away from idolatry, from covetousness, uh, from desiring the things that you don't give me, and instead lead me to be content in you, for you give me all that I need, Lord. This is our prayer there in verse 36. Incline my heart to your testimonies, not to selfish gain. And it goes on then, leads into verse 37, the, uh, the gift of, the spiritual gift of knowledge. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. That, of course, ties into verse 36 because uh, if we are looking at selfish gain, if we're dealing with covetousness, if we're coveting something which God doesn't give us, then we are looking at worthless things. But here we're praying that God would uh, give us the knowledge to see that all things that we need, he has given us. We don't need those worthless things. Verse 38, the gift of fear. Confirm to your servant your promise that you may be feared. This, of course, ties back into the, very, the first commandment. Um, you shall have no other gods. We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Uh, we fear him because he is the one who gives us all things. Uh, therefore, we fear him, we respect him, we honor him above all things. We look to him for all good. Um, and that leads us into verse 39, the last of these uh, seven gifts that we run into in, this, in this, psalm, or this section of the psalm. Turn away the reproach that I dread, for your just decrees are good. We're praying there that God would give us strength that he would strengthen us, that we would face the, the things of this world, remain strong in the faith, uh, and the promises that he gives us in Christ Jesus. So pray this psalm this week, uh, especially appropriate, you know, as we move from Easter and we go through all the resurrection appearances of Jesus, you know, last, last night, the reading for Easter evening or Easter Monday, uh, is Jesus and his appearing to the uh, disciples on the road to Emmaus, and then, of course, right after that, he appears to the 11 there in the upper room. Uh, and all this time when he makes these appearances, he always talks about the fact that he is now going away, but the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, is coming. He's coming to bring these gifts. Uh, and so he's coming to bestow these gifts on us that we may remain in the faith that God gives us in Jesus Christ. Pray God's blessings to you this week. Uh, we'll see you next week on Mondays in the Psalter. Alleluia, Christ is risen.